today I'm going to be making some salves and infusing some herbs and oil to make salves later on. So this is going to be kind of just like an introductory beginner video on how to take dried herbs and make infused oils out of them, how to get a herb from the garden. I'm specifically going to show you how to identify chickweed and the proper one to use for medicinal purposes, how to put a fresh herb into an oil and infuse that herb. And then I'm also going to show you how to make uh, a salve, uh, specifically a chest rub salve uh, for congestion that I like to make for my family uh, and just always have on hand. And so this is gonna be kind of an overview introduction. First off, we're gonna start with some dried herbs uh, and putting it in the oils to infuse those to get ready to make salve with it later on. I hope you stick around. There's a lot of really good tidbits in here and I'm going to give you a couple of recipes on uh, different salves that you can make as well um, for sore muscles, chest rubs, stuff like that. So stick with me. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn something. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got some coconut oil already melted into this jar and I've been taking dried andropagus and putting it into the oil. Um, I fill it up. Uh, I don't do it super scientifically. And usually with dried stuff, you're going to only have to fill it up about halfway because it's going to expand. I just like to fill it up though because I want to get as much of that medicinal quality out of the herbs as possible. And so, um, now you'll notice that I ordered this endrophagus. It is um, not something that I grew. I have tried growing and androphagus in my garden for the last five years, and I was able to get a couple of plants. Um, it's notoriously difficult, but I was not able to get enough to be able to harvest. And so uh, this is one of the only ones that I went ahead and I ordered for my, for my tinctures myself because I just wasn't able to get enough in order to do the things that I wanted to do with it. Um, pretty much everything else I get from my garden though. There's not enough coconut oil in here and so I'm gonna get some more coconut oil and I get the organic, organic, non-GMO. This is cool, this is, it's woman owned. Um, and this is what I use for my, for my salves and anything that I'm going to put on my body because I don't want to put anything on my body that's not organic. Uh, that's just introducing trouble. I just fill it up to the top. And then I'll put this back in my yogurt maker. And let it melt down. It definitely takes up much more room when it's in its solid form than when it's in its liquid form. So I need uh, to put in so that it goes a little bit above the lip and then it will melt down and then I can add more herb to it. So I'm pretty much done with this jar. I'm gonna go get another jar really quick. Okay, so I got my new jar. This is what it looks like right now. I'm gonna stick it back in the yogurt maker, let it melt down as I do some other stuff. Hey, okay, so when you're out in the garden and you're harvesting chickweed, it's important that you get the right type of chickweed. Now I'll show you the wrong type and I'll show you the right type. So if you see this flower, it's got almost like split petals, almost like a heart. That's a chickweed flower. And it's very small. I mean, if you can tell by the size of my thumb next to it, please excuse my nail polish. Uh, but these chickweed have fuzzy stems. It's not what you want. Okay, here's some more chickweed. But this has a smooth stem, if you can see. So this is the kind of chickweed that we want. See, it's still got that flower but it's got the smooth stem. So here it is. I'm just gonna take it. And I've got plenty other ones in my garden, so I don't necessarily need this one right here, and it's kind of in the way. So I'm gonna take the whole thing out. Not 
to mention it spreads a lot so you don't have to worry too much about it. once you have it you pretty much always have it okay now I've weeded a bit make sure I leave all the dirt here I don't want to take any good dirt in with me and now I've got chickweed for my salves okay so something I learned back in the day the hard way is that you definitely don't want water in the salves you're making. This is an oil and herb concoction. You know what happens when you put oil and water together, okay? Especially in salves, it ends up making the, uh, the salves go rancid and it's disgusting. So when I got this fresh chickweed out of the garden, there's a lot of water inside of the stems. And when I pulled it out, I pulled it out by the roots. There's still some dirt on there. If I left the roots on, they'd be able to live for a little while. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the chickweed that I wanna use. There's a couple of leaves in here, but that's okay. I'll, I'll go through that and clear all the, all the excess stuff out later. Right now, what I'm just trying to do is get the majority of the chickweed out of here. And then, okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to just put it in my compost bucket that I got right there. And then I'm going to go through this and I'm going to get out all the leaves and anything else that's in there that's not chickweed. And then I'm going to let this sit overnight so it kind of wilts. In the process, it's going to release a lot of its liquid. And then I'm going to put this in my oil that I make. Oh, it smells so good. It's very herbal. I love it. And um, I'm going to put it in the oil and I'm going to put that container that has the oil and the chickweed in it in my yogurt maker for a few nights and I'm gonna let them just kind of soak and the oil is gonna pull out especially when it's on that really low heat from the yogurt maker it's gonna pull out those nutrients from the chickweed and and hold it in the oil and so as it does that there's still gonna be a little bit of water but what I'm gonna do is after it's done doing uh, I'm letting it sit with the chickweed in there. I'm going to take the chickweed out, strain it out, and then I'm going to let it sit again. All that water is going to drop to the bottom and the good oil is going to be on top. And so what I can do then is I can take that oil off the top, making sure that I don't get any of the water underneath. And that way I know that I have a pure oil substance, which is exactly what I want for my salves. Now I could also take the chickweed and I could put it in a dehydrator or something like that and where I would end up drying it and that would get all the moisture out and I wouldn't have to worry about it. But I think that you lose something from the herbs when you do that. And so I would rather have it straight, the herb in the oil and have to do that little extra bit of straining at the end. I don't mind doing that at all. I would rather have a full strength medicinal concoction than just a, a, a mostly all the nutrients and, and medicinal components that it had in my salves. And so I don't mind doing that extra work. I think anytime more processes take away, um, the fresher that you can get the stuff, the better. And so I will take the stuff from the garden and use it fresh if possible uh, for the salves, but I will not, um, I will not do that all the time. Sometimes I have to have it dried. Uh, so if you're, um, if you're doing roots or something like that, sometimes you have to dry them uh, and that's okay. I mean, if you have to, you have to, but if at all possible, I'll get them fresh and I'll let them wilt just a little bit and then I'll put it in. But the last thing you want, and I'm gonna repeat this one more time because seriously ruined everything that I had. Do not let water into your salves, okay? Do not let water into your salves. And if you do that, you're gonna be good to go. Hard to mess up at that point. Okay, so 
what I did is I got some chamomile yesterday from the garden. My lovely daughter picked it for me and we let it sit overnight and so it has wilted now. So I don't know if you can see, but it's right in there. And I'm going to put it in one of my containers that fit in my yogurt maker. And then I'm going to pour uh, coconut oil over top of it. Uh, now I have used lots of different oils. I have used avocado oil. I have used olive oil. I have used grapeseed oil, rosehip seed oil, and I've used a lot of them. Uh, and it's just basically depending on what you're going to use uh, your products, uh, what products you're trying to make. And um, right now I'm just kind of making a general oil that I can use as I start concocting different situations. And so coconut oil is basically good for everything topical. And so uh, it's a very general, neutral, beneficial oil that you can use in your hair, you can use it on your face, you can use it on your skin, on the rest of your body. Like it's, it's very gentle and it's very beneficial. But again, that's not to say that there isn't other ones that you can use. Okay, so uh, since they're wilted, it's not filling up quite the whole jar, but I'm gonna take my melted oil and this is not hot. Like I could put my hands in this if I wanted to. I don't, I don't want to because then I have to deal with oil, but uh, I just warmed this very, very gently. Okay, I'm gonna pour it over my sink just in case. Okay, you can see it's not hot at all. As I'm holding the glass, it's not doing anything. But I filled the glass with the olive oil and I'm gonna take my little stirrer, the andropagus off of it. And I'm gonna make sure everything is completely covered in the oil. And I'm gonna take this with the lid off and I'm gonna stick it in my yogurt maker. And then I'm gonna let this sit for two weeks. Okay, so I've got stuff getting ready for being processed. So I've got the chickweed and it's just kind of wilting a little bit. I've got um, coffee and lavender and calendula and chamomile over there um, in the yogurt maker, in their oils, uh, kind of doing their thing. They're gonna be in there for about two weeks. I'm gonna be making some special facial moisturizer and salve uh, for um, blemishes and skin problems, something that you guys might uh, be interested in, I don't know. And I'll do a video on when I put those together because there's a certain set of uh, ingredients that I put together that I think is really, really awesome. I mean, they really, it's taking some stuff that really just works together well. And just a leave on situation that really just like gives you the best benefit for your buck. Not really like you're, you're paying a whole lot of money for this, but I mean like this is a high quality situation going on for your face. It's taking care of a whole lot of things. But anyway, what I'm doing right now is I'm making a chest rub so um, if at any point somebody in our family gets sick or somebody that I know gets sick who wants something like this, um, what they can do is they can rub this on their chest and it'll help relieve their congestion. And so what I have done is I took uh, olive oil, like a really organic virgin, you know, cold pressed olive oil. And uh, I, for the last two or three weeks, in the olive oil, I've been soaking eucalyptus, horseradish, and ginger. And if you guys have ever smelled those three things, they are definitely something that's gonna open up your, your passageways and, and really loosen up some phlegm. And so, especially horseradish. I was making fire cider the other year, and like I was grating the horseradish. I've learned since to do it outside. 
but I had to leave the room like every 10, 15 seconds, I'd like scratch a bunch and then I'd have to leave the room and just like get my breath back. So this is not as potent as like freshly ground horseradish and it's, and it's diluted with the oil. So you don't have to worry too much about there. There's not going to be any kind of reactions happening unless you've got like super sensitive skin uh, with these chest rubs. But I've made this before for my kids and my family and nobody's had a problem and my kids actually have pretty sensitive skin, so uh, I'm not worried about that. But anyway, I have my white beeswax little pellets. I am, and it's organic. I am so excited. I'm going to be able to have my own beeswax from my own bees that I can use to make these salves. And then I've got some organic eucalyptus essential oil. So we're going to put this all together, and we're going to pour it in some tins, and we're going to give ourselves... Uh, some high quality salve. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go on to my lowest heat burner. I'm gonna put my burner on the lowest heat setting possible. We're talking like super low. And I'm gonna pour, I'm, I have the appropriate amounts here. So I'm gonna pour the entire eucalyptus oil The entire ginger oil and the entire horseradish. Okay. The nice thing about a tiny kitchen is you always have everything close at hand. Okay, so this is going to be heating up slightly, and I'm going to put some drops of essential oil in. Now, this is going to fill up about maybe three tins. I'm going to put about 30 drops of eucalyptus oil per tin, okay? So um, that is that is about what we're gonna what we're gonna need for. Uh, the chest rub. Okay, so I'm putting the eucalyptus oil in. I like to use a wooden spoon for all of this. I'm just going to kind of blend it together. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, I mean, it's strong. It's It's making my sinuses clear right now. Okay, so uh, now that I've got the amount that I want in there, yeah, I'll put just a couple more drops. This is super, super diluted once you put it in here, especially with the beeswax going in. It's gonna kind of hold onto that. But I'm also gonna get some lavender oil really quick. Hold on. Okay, so I've got my lavender oil. I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there too. Yeah, so the idea for that is usually when you're you're congested and you're sick like that, you're having a hard time breathing. Usually you're you're gonna want to sleep at that point, and it might be difficult to sleep because of that congestion. And so um, when you're sick like that, you're gonna need need something to help you relax so that you can rest, so that you can heal up and be better. And so I like to put a little bit of lavender in there just to kind of promote that, especially if I'm putting on my kids because um, I know lavender just makes them zonk out like that. Mmm, oh that smells good. I might put a little bit more eucalyptus. You can see I'm very scientific about this. Oh, that's exactly what I want. Okay, so I'm getting ready to put in my, my beeswax. Um, pellets and uh, the idea is you put in uh, about three to four tablespoons of these pellets uh, per eight ounces of oil. Uh, if you want to go in smoother, uh, you do less. If you want to have a harder consistency and you got to really rub it in, 
um, then you're going to want to have more. Um, I know that pressure on the chest when you're congested is not a good thing. And so I'm probably going to do like two and a half to make it just really soft and so that it can just smear right in. Um, yeah, so I've got about two cups of oil in here. So I'm going to put five tablespoons in. It's not a full tablespoon for the last one, just a little bit. Okay, so it doesn't look like a lot. And it can be a little bit scary. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like a lot of beeswax is going in and that's okay it it I've realized that it is much easier to put more beeswax in if you pour it into your tins and you realize that it's not quite what you want it to be you can just scoop it back into the into the pot and kind of heat it up a little bit uh, than it is to add too many beeswax too much beeswax and then um, you can't go back unless you have like extra oils or something like that laying around. But I just used all of my oil that I'm going to use. And so I am not able to do that. And one of the cool things that you can do is you can let your spoon cool. You can keep your, your oil on the, on the stove and kind of keep that warm and not pour it into the, the tins yet, but you can let the spoon cool and then you can kind of see what the consistency is on the spoon. So that helps me uh, because putting five tablespoons into uh, 16 ounces of liquid is, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like enough. And so there's always like that niggling fear in the back of my mind going, I didn't do it right. And I don't know if you ever feel like that, but. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick this kind of like in the fridge to cool it off quickly and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I took this into the into the fridge and you can see there's like this, uh, right here, there's a little, a drop that kind of solidified and I'm touching that and it feels just, just right. Yeah, that's exactly right. That makes me really happy. Now, if I was using something kind of like, um, if it was like coconut oil or shea butter or something that was thicker in here, uh, I would probably also adjust my ratios of uh, pellets of beeswax as well. So uh, olive oil is not going to harden as it cools like coconut oil would. So there's that as well. Something to think about. Okay, so I have two different kinds of jars that I like to use. I like to use these thick glass jars for my family just because uh, it has a less footprint and it's, I like glass a lot. I use these for stuff that I'm selling. Uh, it's just a black tin because it's, it's very pretty, I think. I think it's gorgeous and then it's like the perfect size on top for me to print out my labels that have all the ingredients on it and my my logo for Faye Hollow Homestead and and stuff like that so I'm going to fill up the two tins first and then I'll put the rest in my family one okay I have enough for some little tubes so I like to make samples for people because they don't know me very well at least not yet and so one of the ways that I make samples is by using these uh, chapstick tubes and if I ever have extra like just a little bit extra of a product I will fill some of these tubes and I'll just pass them out to people and say hey you know your your kid's sick or you know you're not feeling well or next time that you're not feeling good why don't you try this and so it's nice to have uh, and I think that it's a nice gesture to have samples for people uh, especially if you're doing like a farmers market or something and they don't know you and they want to kind of get like a better feel for you okay so in order to fill these little these little plastic tool tubes I'm gonna use my my squeezy 
And usually it's about one or two squeezies. And these little tubes are actually really a great size for putting a, a label on as well uh, that wraps around it. So you can still make them look professional if you're interested in, in selling this stuff. These are really good to have as well um, uh, for certain types of products. Like I have a, a thing of these in each of my, in all my purses and all my cars. I, I give one of these little things a comfrey salve to everybody I know basically to keep with them because uh, comfrey is just such a great healer for boo-boos. And especially if they're going to be keeping my kids around or I know that they have kids or you know they are a gardener or something like that and they're constantly needing something to help with you know the boo-boos in life a comfrey to go salve is really nice and I don't like a big purse I have like this little tiny wallet um, that has a couple of things dangling from it and that's what I use so it can stick in my little in my little zipper pouch. So I've got band-aids and I've got comfrey salve and my kids are good to go at that point. They don't need anything else. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like now uh, that I've poured it in to all my containers. Okay, you can see I spilled just a little bit. But I have two of these containers, which is nice. And then I have two of these as well. And I can sell one of these easily, like. I don't have to keep these just for home. Sometimes people like it in the glass jar better. So it's nice to have a variety. And then you can see these are filled up as well. So there we go. So all I have to do is let these uh, cool. And once they solidify and all the heat is released, then I can put the lids on. I can print out the labels of everything that I put into it. And then... They're ready to go. Okay, so here is the lovely salve. Once it solidifies, I think it's super cool how there's like these little dots that end up happening. It happens in every salve that I make. And it's got this really cool, nice green, cool green color, which goes along with the idea of the eucalyptus uh, chest rub really well. And that's just natural. So there is my my chest rub and I think it's very interesting because I haven't really seen a whole lot of people use horseradish in in salves and so I think that this is this is kind of a cool thing um I like to use uh ginger black pepper cayenne uh infused oils together uh to make a sore muscle rub and and that has been just absolutely incredible. It just, it warms the area um, very well, but it doesn't, it doesn't burn. And so um, the first time I was trying that out, it was a little bit scary. I was like, do I want to touch the black pepper and the cayenne oil? And <laughs> it was fine. I just had very warm hands for a little while. Uh, and so actually later that night, my husband ended up coming home and he had, he had pulled something at work because he's just throwing lumber around like crazy there. And, um, and so I was like, Hey, I've, I've got just the thing for that. Do you want to try it? You'll be my guinea pig. And I, I rubbed his shoulders with it and, uh, he said that it was incredible and he absolutely loved it. So, um, there's another recipe for you if you guys want it. Okay. Well, there is a kind of introduction to infusing oils, uh, with herbs, how to do that, how to combine, um, the the oils with the pellets um, making sure that the pellets you know dissolve into the oil uh, and not putting too much into it um, I do want to say thank you so much for joining me thank you for watching uh, please check out my other videos I've got some cool stuff that deal with uh, the medicinal garden where I grow all this stuff um, also I have a food forest that I really really love and then a vegetable garden that I use to feed my family so uh, not only are we doing stuff like making salves but we're doing a lot of other stuff 
Oh, and we also have a homestead, so there's like, you know, animals and stuff like that too. So uh, if you enjoyed it, please like the video, please hit the subscribe button. And then if you really loved it, you can hit that notification bell because I'll be putting out videos almost daily. And this is the kind of stuff that I do. I hope you have a wonderful day and stay blessed.